Let me talk about one of the more prominent, I can't even say the most recent Biden mess up because they, they just come so fast and furiously. But this one right here was another one of these very likely stories that he just continues to meander out at a moment's notice. Okay, he was saying, right, that um, a, a 10 year old rape victim, okay, had to cross state lines in order to get an abortion. And it's like, okay, cool. I, I highly doubt this ever happened, but. Tell us more, Grandpa. We're not dot We're not f nodding off because your story's boring or anything. We're just, you know, we're just resting our eyes. We're still listening, though. Go ahead and continue to say whatever you want. President Biden is facing increasing skepticism uh, that after he repeated a horrifying story, uh, he made up a horrifying allegation of a ten-year-old rape victim to per or to push his executive order on abortion which really doesn't do anything when it comes to abortion all it does is just make accessible some experimental drug that can kill a fetus at 10 weeks and and it just expand the reach of dhs like outside of that it's, it's something you know it's not really anything about abortion it's kind of like the florida bill it's, it's the don't say gay bill gay's not even in the bill anyways without seeking any evidence that that tale is true it's kind of like what biden does it's also like kamala harris i'll remember one as well remember she was at a civil rights protest okay and um she fell out of a stroller or something like that and then her mom went to go pick her up and it's like what do you want little kamala freedom oh God, somebody's mom who I wish traveled across state lines to get an abortion. Anyways, Biden on Friday raged against Ohio's restrictive abortion law as he referenced the widely reported incident in which a young girl was allegedly forced to travel across state lines. Oh my God, if she was a black rifle, that would be so terrible. Oh my God. But anyways, uh, to obtain an abortion after being raped. Horrific if true, but again, another one of these statistical anomalies that really shouldn't factor into fucking anything. Um, 95 to 98 percent of abortions are totally fucking elective, by the way. It's just hypergamy being enforced and put on full fucking blast because there's no way to undermine the virility of a man than to kill his unborn offspring. Anyways, in which a young girl, yes, uh, had to travel across state lines. Imagine being that little girl. Oh, she was 10. Oh, the perfect sniffing age. I'm serious. Just, just imagine being that little girl. 10 years old. Yeah, just use your own deductive logic on that. Okay, like I understand that certain hormonal things start to kick in, but... 10 seems a little bit young to be coming um, reproductively viable. What's the most, um, or the least um, graphic way of saying that? Like, like your story would be a little bit more compelling if you were saying 13 or 14, but 10? I don't really know, man. Like, I'm already doubting that, okay? It's, again, horrific if true, but... Eh. But hours later, the Washington Post acknowledged uh, what conservative critics had been saying for days. The story, which was first reported July 1st by the Indianapolis Star, is highly dubious. A single source, Indianapolis OBGYN Dr. Caitlin Bernard, claims an Ohio child abuse doctor contacted her after determining that the young victim was six weeks and three days pregnant, three days too late for an, uh, to obtain an abortion under the restrictive Ohio abortion law triggered by the Supreme Court Dobbs decision. Decision. I'm sure again another one of these things oh god oh gosh darn just under the wire I'm sure you're not gonna have some doctors being like what did you say uh, that happened uh, six weeks ago are you sure it wasn't um, five weeks and six days are you sure about that day are you sure I'm sure there's not gonna be fudges like that and to be completely honest okay it's I don't think anybody's gonna lose too much sleep over that okay it's just if you know if somebody's coming in with like a fucking noticeable baby bump okay maybe their water's broken and it's like I need an abortion I'm only six weeks along wait a minute calm down for a fucking sec so again there are more red flags on this uh biden would feel feel completely at home because i've been with she before anyways uh but bernard uh, is a prominent abortion advocate okay
reported Megan Fox, uh, not that one, uh, the reporter, the, the tolerable one, Megan Fox, uh, add to the right-leaning PJ media. Unfortunately, not quite as attractive as Megan Fox, but you take the good, you take the bad, and you throw her off a cliff. Because why are you fucking a white rapper? What the fuck is wrong with you? Anyways, and provided no details about the location of the crime on whether it was being investigated by authorities. Yeah, no, exactly. If you're saying that you're raped, there's a carve-out in all of these fucking abortion laws that are there that uh, protect against rape and incest uh the only one that i know of specifically it could be completely different in a bunch of other states as well but uh utah needs a police report to accompany a, a rape caveat as well which is the way that it should be done okay instead of just these spurious rape allegations i couldn't go to the police department because i was so close and then on the date and it's like no just file your police report and then come back to me well there's consequences for filing a false police report we know by law, both physicians are mandated reporters who must or disclose evidence of child abuse to police in the days since no arrests in such a case have been reported. Yeah, and you'd think that everybody would be on the side of finding the guy who um, raw-dogged a 10-year-old. I'd imagine people are probably trying to fucking figure out who that guy is. I would say, but again, this never happened. Fact-checking website Snopes.com said on Tuesday, Bernard has refused to provide per, uh, further information. A doctor-client privilege. <laughs> yeah, okay, you're just an activist, stupid. On Saturday, the Washington Post added the child service agency in Cleveland, Columbus, Cincinnati, Dayton, Toledo, and other Ohio cities were unaware of a 10-year-old rape victim in their jurisdiction. You literally went to all of the big uh, Ohio cities and... Nobody's heard word one about this shit. Okay. White House press secretary, the black gay one, refused to say if Biden had confirmed that local law enforcement. Now, nah, he already talked about it and he's already forgot about it anyways. And um, because of that, people are starting to take notice. And that's going to be the guts of this. Okay. Because we got the New York Times, the New York motherfucking Times. Here's their headline. At 79, Biden is testing the boundaries of age and the presidency. Oh my God. Are they starting to realize what everybody's known for? decades at this point biden has said he plans to run for a second term he can't even run up the stairs fuck off but his age has become an uncomfortable issue for him and his party yeah we can hear the cackles off in the distance as well okay or gavin newsom over in california not kamala though i was referencing hillary clinton nobody's voting for kamala okay it has nothing to do with race or gender or anything like that. Literally, she couldn't even get 1% in the fucking presidential primaries. What the fuck do you think that she'd pull this time around? What have you been your accomplishments as the first black woman of color to be vice president? Uh, we'll wait. We'll wait. Nothing. Oh, okay. Avoiding any responsibility to the southern border. Um, But I did make it to Europe. <laughs> Ugh. No, man. This is just the soft launch of who the fuck are we running in 2024 against Trump? I bet. <laughs> I know, man, we've been talking about it for a while, but it's going to be 2016 rematch. You fucking will bet. Everybody today, literally Hollywood couldn't write this any better. Everybody loves a good remake, right? Unfucking believable We're here. We haven't moved anywhere in eight fucking years. We did. <laughs> All right, then. Washington. When President Biden leaves Tuesday night for a four-day swing through the Middle East. Oh. I'm going to go pick up some of those Black Hawk helicopters he left in Afghanistan. He will presumably be more rested than he would have been had he followed the original plan. The trip was initially tacked onto another journey last month in Europe. So this old fucking curmudgeon had to come back and rest up in what, Delaware? And he thought that it would be less taxing to take a long fucking plate f or plane, fri plane flight? Look at me, uh, this dementia is rubbing off, okay? from Europe back to Washington or Delaware. I don't fucking even know. Oh, right. He was seen in Washington anyways, and then travel. Okay. By the same plane to the middle East. Like, do you think that that's better? All right, then anyways, uh, the trip was initially tacked on to yes, the Europe trip, uh, the arduous 10 days overseas trek until it became clear that Biden's team that such extended travel might be unnecessarily taxing for the 79 year old president. Imagine writing that, okay, unnecessarily taxing for the president, for the president. 
Um, how many? Okay, because uh, Trump during his first term, okay, what did he cap out at? Uh, 74, uh, 72 or something like that? Was there any talk outside of just the crazy echo chambers and the fringes out there? Oh, Trump's not fit for office. Why? Because orange man bad. No, but uh, nobody ever doubted his ability to perform or a lack of energy. In fact, he was always unhinged. Okay, enough about the January 6 hearings. Okay, but now Biden man he can't even stay for like a full week in washington dc without having to retire to delaware for a four-day fucking weekend okay to play mario kart with my with my granddaughter or somebody's granddaughter i'm not too sure at least i hope she's not mine because the sniffing would be even more inappropriate aids also cited political and diplomatic reasons to reorganize the extra stops i am sure you know, just covering for the king right but the reality is that managing the schedule for the oldest president in american history presents distinct challenges and the fact that um there's nothing going on up here okay if he ever has to wear a hat in the middle east you know to protect him from sunburn and stuff you better install gutters on that bitch because there's fucking just slop between those ears just a year and a half from his first term holy fuck it's felt like a decade anyways how much more catastrophe can happen mr biden is already more than a year older than ronald yes ronald reagan was at the end of two terms everybody thought that i wasn't fit for it back then yes and then uh i made walter mcgovern laugh oh no wait what that was the asshole the nixon blew out yes i mean um Walter Mondale, there you go again. Speaking about Biden falling off of his his bicycle, there you go again. At least you had a helmet this time. Anyways, uh, if he mounts another campaign in 2024, just imagine that fucking fossil but just meandering up to the podium. You hope that he at least stops there. Maybe they'll just uh, put like one of those uh, balls on a stick that like cats like to play with. Okay, they'll just put that on the podium and then just instinctually he'll come up and start batting away at it in order to uh, get his attention. Mr. Biden would be asking the country to elect a leader that is fucking 86 years old. Listen, man, we got to reconcile with reality at this point. Something the Biden administration fucking refuses to do. How many people live to be 86? I'm not trying to be morose. I'm not trying to wish anything into existence or anything like that. 86 is fucking ancient, okay? Trump, even when he runs again in 2024, he'll be 80 when he hangs it up. That's still fucking old, dude. Term limits when? Anyways, testing the outer boundaries of age and the presidency. No, and decency. You misspelt decency. Polls show many Americans consider Biden too old and too stupid and just not there. And some Democratic strategists do not think he should run again. No, no, he shouldn't. But again, he's going to if he's still alive. It'll be fucking sad, okay? But again, he could also just hang it up, which I also think is very likely because uh, the Democrats just really want another first with the first black woman to be there, okay? Because that's the only thing that this administration can realistically champion. Oh, look at how, how many historic firsts we had. Like, historically first in uh, record-breaking inflation, gas price. No, but anyways, they just like identity politics. It's been that way since they've been installed into power. That's the only thing that they can champion at this point so unless biden hangs it up uh, june or not june sorry january 21st i think would be inauguration date 2023 he he's running again and it'll just be fucking sad because grandpa should just be allowed to sit on the porch and then just count the rest of his days and it won't get him very far because at this point i don't think he can count past five it is unsurprisingly a sensitive topic in the west wing yeah no because he's also there's also been reports which again i trust about as far as i can throw that he's acting like a fucking dementia patient just flying off the handles and literally anything and just dropping off of sentences but again reports if it's not corroborated with anything like that but you also see how well actually you don't intermittently you see him uh, engage with the media and he's awfully snippy definitely not a direct sign of any sort of you know dementia or alzheimer's but whatever okay 
Um, in interviews, some sanctioned by the White House and some not, more than a dozen current and former senior officials and advisor uniformly report that Biden remained intellectually engaged. Well, that's nice. I'm glad we have such a high bar for the presidency. He's engaged, at least. Uh, asking smart questions at meetings like, yes, Mr. President, we can have steak for dinner. And no, Mr. President, pens aren't for sucking on. Grilling aides on points of dispute, calling them late at night. What kind of shampoo and conditioner do you use? Oh, yeah, the good one. Grilling aides um, and picking out that weak point on page 14 of a memo. Yeah, 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 we got uh, speeches like his abortion remarks on Friday night up until the last minute. So was he the one who put in uh, end of quote and repeat the last line? Oh, okay. Just, just asking for clarification. I know I'm not as, uh, no, I'm not as smart as this uh, propped up president, right? Uh, but he acknowledged uh, Mr. Biden looks older than just a few years ago. Oh yeah, it's it's tangible at this point. He's definitely not that spry old man who recounted the tale of the leg hair down at the pool with corn pop being a bad dude. He's look he's looking older than the old Walter Poppet from Jeff Dunham. A political liability cannot be solved by traditional White House stratagems like staff shakeups and new communications plans. His energy level, while impressive for a man of his age, again, compare and contrast. Actually, we got a video. I don't know when that one's going to release, but Henry Kissinger is 99, and I already um, talked about that. Okay, in that video specifically, he's 20 years older than Biden. Okay. And he sat down for an interview with the New York Post and kept conversation going for a fucking hour. When was the last time Biden did anything for an hour outside of just stare at his reflection in the mirror, wondering who's that old man in there? Like most of his speeches only go about 20 minutes. Okay. And then he might take a couple of questions or otherwise he goes, bye. And then he just shuffles off stage. Right. So to say that, oh yeah, he has good energy for a 79 year old. Okay. Most of my elderly relatives die off before 79. Okay. So I don't really have any, you know, like firsthand um, experience with this stuff, but you see other 79 year olds that are out there. Like Anthony Hopkins is in his fucking eighties. Right. And he looks far more spry than Joe Biden. It, there's, there's no comparison here. He has fucking dementia. Just re just fucking realize it for Christ's sakes. Everybody else has. Except for these legacy outlets that just want to say, no, Biden's legitimately elected. 81 million votes. Can't be wrong. Fuck off. Is not... Oh, right. Yeah, his energy levels, while impressive, is not what it once was. Yeah, no shit. And some aides quietly watch out for him. Yeah, no, exactly. Unfortunately, they weren't exactly, you know, on top of their job right there when he went, oh, fuck, tits up, right? Mr. Biden fell while dismounting a bicycle. Yeah, exactly. His foot got caught in the fucking, you know, old man pedal protectors, which it happens to the best of us, right? But again, this is all just compounded with everything. Everything in a vacuum has an excuse, but for fuck's sakes, man, like, let's just acknowledge reality. Uh, White House officials ruefully notice that is among the top stories of the week. Never mind the president works out five mornings a week. What does he do? What, what does he do? Okay. Cause as a personal trainer, I know what uh, some people call working out. Okay. So again, if we could get a regiment here, that would be nice. Often with a physical trainer, often with a physical trainer, often can be once a month, often can be three times a week. So again, quantify this shit on what many men his age hardly ride bikes anymore or that many mage men. No, a lot of men his age ride bikes. Okay. For fuck's sakes, it's one of the lowest impact forms of exercise that's out there. Fuck it. Ugh! Journalists. This is why we don't use New York times because they're just fucking propagandists. Just get down to the point where they start to compare him to, yes, Ronald Reagan, yes. Until now, the oldest president was Reagan, yes. Uh, the, uh, when a poor debate performance in 1984 fr the, briefly threatened his re-election, he recovered in his next encounter by joking that he would not exploit my opponent's youth and uh, inexperience, yes. And again, all the way up until like his last years in office, Reagan was still fucking sharp as a knife. Biden, meanwhile, is about as sharp as a spoon, and you could have made that analogy 20 fucking years ago, okay? The man was good on the campaign trail, probably all the way up until until 2012 and then you remember right because there's that really uh, it's an unfortunately famous picture out there of barack giving joe the 
Presidential Medal of Freedom. Okay, remember, that was in 2015. 2015 or 2016, right after Bo died or some shit like that. I'm going to pull it up before we wrap this up. That's the man who was vice president at the time, okay? Barack Obama was still the president. So this was whatever it was, 2015, 2016, something like that. That was that daughter and old asshole, okay? The same man that Barack Obama said, never underestimate Joe's capacity to fuck something up. Something to that effect, right? That's who he was talking about at the time. He picked him specifically to run as his running mate because Joe was inoffensive. Joe couldn't get anything done. Joe was just the statesman out there, okay? He was never supposed to be a number one. He is a firm number two. Probably the only time that, at least in the past fucking decade or so, that Joe and firm number two have ever been said in the same sentence. He's looked like that. He's talked like that for about a decade. And if anybody's dumb enough to vote for him again, especially after what he's accomplished in his first ugh, year and a half in office, I don't know what to tell you. Or maybe you should be telling us what the fuck you're smoking in order to come to those conclusions. But I don't know if even the New York Times is starting to lay the groundwork that, yeah, man, um, remember how hard we were on Reagan all the time? Yeah, um, Biden's starting to look awfully lot like him, so maybe we should uh, start looking at alternatives. I think that's more of a... Uh, slight against reagan if we're being completely honest because hey man first term reagan was pretty fucking dope second term reagan eh, he started to kind of lean on his advisors who were a bunch of fucking war hawks remember hw bush was his vice president after all but yeah we'll see where this goes because this fucking water slide we're only about a, what a third down this water slide and it's gonna get fucking crazy from here so with all that said thank you all very much for the gift of your time i've been don consuelo i want you to follow your gut and get after it take care everyone